Hey Nerdy Knitters! When you're a new knitter, it's important to have a few reference books. I know we can depend on YouTube and things online and different articles we might search and find, but there's nothing better than having one or two reference books on hand that you can use when you have a knitting question. But not all reference books are good for new knitters. Well, I really like this book. The Principles of Knitting. It's a really big book. But if you're a new knitter, you could get overwhelmed by the words that she uses or just the amount of text in this book. So I think some simpler books are better for newer knitters. So I have four book recommendations for you that I really like. And then I also checked in some online communities and asked what they thought would be good for a new knitter. And I found some recommendations there as well. But before we get to those, I just wanna say, hey, I'm Tanya here at Nerdy Knitting. I'm a certified knitting instructor and a knitwear designer. And my goal is to help you become confident and adventurous with your knitting. You'll find links for everything we mentioned down in the video description box, as well as some timestamp links. First on my recommended list is by Margaret Radcliffe, her knitting answer book. This is a great pocket size reference that you can toss right in your knitting bag. The book has 13 chapters, yarn, reading patterns, casting on, binding off, basics, tools, shaping, fitting, and more in here. And it's written in a Q and A format. Like one of the questions here, I knit a cardigan and it was fine at first, but now it's twisting in the fronts don't hang straight anymore. What do I do? And then she has the answer underneath. So you'll find lots of questions and answers divided by the chapter topics. And that includes lots of drawings and illustrations. This section's really nice. She has one for basic pattern stitches. Knitting instructions seem to assume that I know what garter stitch, stockinette stitch, reverse stockinette, and ribbing are, but I still find them confusing. What are the differences between them? And then she has a really nice chart here that shows you how to work it, what the name of it is, flat knitting instructions and circular knitting instructions because they are different and various characteristics. Now this is a great guide for new knitters who want something small they can toss in their bag and use as a quick reference. You just want to look for the chapter where your question might be and then flip to that section and your question's probably answered in there in good detail. I have many of Margaret Radcliffe's books that are a little more advanced, but this is a great starter book for new knitters. Next on my list is The Knitter's Dictionary by Kate Atherley, which is a slimmer version that's very similar to my favorite Margaret Radcliffe. It's a Q&A style that's meant to be used like that as a quick reference, but it's sorted alphabetically like a dictionary. It includes an introduction, a short section on understanding knitting patterns. I really like this page right here where it talks about yarn recommendations for specific techniques and projects. It also includes drawings to illustrate various things throughout the book, but it's written more like a dictionary, like I flip to the long tail cast on section, and it has some notes about it and then some illustrations to walk you through the technique. So it's an alphabetical reference, but if I had to pick one, I would probably pick this this one. I think there's just better content and more content that's good for new knitters. Now for a larger reference book, I really like this one. This is probably my favorite go-to resource, the Vogue Knitting Ultimate Knitting Book. I even have mine tabbed on the side because I refer to it so often. Now this one has 16 chapters that go over the basics from yarn and supplies, basic techniques, and then it divides off into various categories of knitting, cables, color, lace, circular, directional, and a section for finishing and understanding instructions. And then the final few chapters focus on designing. If you wanna design your own hats or socks or even sweaters, there's lots of good information about that in there. But for for beginners, the first half of the book is perfect. The yarn information, the basics for casting on, binding off, all of the different increase and decrease techniques, and the understanding instructions and correcting errors sections are really helpful as well. And everything has really good illustrations. So if you like to see things being done as you read the instructions, then this is a good one to have for that. And along with that beginner info, there's lots of high level overview of lots of topics like cables and lace and various color work techniques and brioche knitting. Nothing really in depth, but it gives you a good overview of the different techniques. And then you can do some further research in other books when there's a technique that you really wanna learn more about. For example, I can flip to the brioche section and it gives us the basics, the brioche stitch and two color brioche and some increases and decreases. But that's it, just two pages. It has all a good information about those basic techniques. But of course, if I wanted to learn more about brioche, I would probably find books that were dedicated just to that topic. But it does have a great overview, high level overview of lots of different knitting topics. So it's a good first reference book. 
Now, an alternative to the Vogue Knitting book is the Vogue Knitting Ultimate Quick Reference Book. This still has much of the same reference information. It's just condensed and more of the advanced things, especially the design sections, have been removed. So it still covers all of the basic things and just remove some of the things that are more advanced. So the Vogue Knitting Ultimate Quick Reference Book is a good alternative to their larger Vogue Knitting Ultimate Knitting Book. My last recommendation is Knitting in Plain English by Maggie Rigetti. I don't own this book personally. I've got it from the library a few times, especially when I was a brand new knitter, and it's a really great book. Now this one is different from my other recommendations. It does have some illustrations and some techniques things, but it's written more in a conversational style where you're just sitting and chatting with somebody about knitting. It's the type of book I would like to sit with over a cup of coffee or when I'm sitting in bed at night just want to read a book, but she has so much good solid information for new knitters in here that I really, really recommend it. Now those are my top picks and here are two more that, that have been recommended in the knitting community in different groups that I'm in. The Knitter's Companion by Vicki Square. It has 14 sections and it covers all of the basics and it does include good illustrations and charts and it even has a companion DVD where the author walks through all of these techniques with you. So if you really like visual elements, if you're on YouTube, then you probably do, then this might be a good resource to have. Before we get to the last one, I just wanna say stick around because after we go through all of these, I'm going to give you my top recommendations of the two that I would choose depending on my situation. Now the next one is The Knitter's Handbook by Elaine Rowley. This one has 16 sections and it also covers the basics and it has clear illustrations for the techniques, similar to Vogue Knitting, but it's an older book. I'm not sure if it's still in publication, but you can find old copies of it. Now you can check these books out for yourself, but I wanna help you narrow down your choices. Now I think every knitter should have at least two good references on their shelf. They should have one that they can refer to quickly, throw in their bag if they need to. Something like Margaret Radcliffe's The Knitting Answer Book or Vogue Knitting's Quick Reference Book. Those are condensed and smaller and cover all of the basics really well. So that's a great one to have on your shelf when you want to refer to something and you need a quick answer to something. Now when you wanna dive a little deeper into a topic, then you should have a good reference book on your shelf. And I really like the Vogue Knitting Ultimate Reference Book. And a good alternative is The Knitting Knitter's Companion by Vicki Square or The Knitter's Handbook by Elaine Rowley. I would choose one of those to have. So you should have two books, a quick reference that you can grab whenever you need it, like this one, and then a larger reference that covers lots of different topics and highlights of different various knitting techniques, lace, cables, brioche, all of those things. And for that, I would choose either Vogue Knitting or one of the online recommendations I found, The Knitter's Handbook or The Knitter's Companion. All three of those would be a good choice. If you have a recommendation for a book that's perfect for new knitters as a reference or quick resource, leave a comment and tell us about it. And if you'd like to advance your knitting skills and look at some new knitting topics, take a look at this playlist I've linked right here that covers a lot of various knitting techniques and topics and helps you improve your knitting.